Okay, in the previous lesson, we defined what torsion means and I showed you how by using certain definitions, by differentiating that, we get the value of torsion. So as a recap, what we found out was that the first derivative of the binomial vector with respect to S is equals to negative torsion of the unit normal vector. Okay, and for today's lesson, I would really like to talk about this value over here, torsion, like this. Okay, now, going back to the free net frame, okay, so we got a curve like that, okay? Now, I will just write the ijk components very small here because it's not our main concern for today's lesson. Okay, so we've got a point here and it's moving along here. Now, by having the binomial, the binomial, the normal and the tangent, which I will just simply write as like that, the unit tangent, the unit normal, and the, the unit binomial, okay, is, is what we call the free net frame. Okay, it's what we call the free net frame. Now, in my previous lessons, I also showed you that the curvature really kind of describes how much the tangent vector changes. Likewise, the radius of curvature is really a circle that can measure the, the, the amount of bending, so to speak. So, now, drawing from the fact that the binomial vector, okay, is equals to T cross with N in this certain order, okay, it, it looks as if that the binomial vector, or really where the vector, the, where the point that the, the binomial vector points, depends on the unit tangent and the unit normal, or the unit binomial depends on the unit tangent and the unit normal. Okay, so if we can really suspect that if the unit binomial is based on the unit tangent and the unit normal, uh, really a quantity that, that sees how the, the unit binomial changes really suggests the amount of twisting of the free net frame. Okay, now another bit of information that really the torsion okay, can, can obviously be more than zero or can be less than zero. Okay, now I won't show you now but you shall see in a later example that we can also use this fact or the, the value of the torsion to really measure how in which direction the curve is twisting. Okay, so like I said, all this is really very abstract, but I, as the more you study calculus, vector calculus, you would really get acquainted with all these abstract terms. Okay, but for now, let's just call it amount of twisting, okay, as opposed to amount of bending of the unit tangent vector, amount of twisting over here. So, this is the result that we want to show, or we want to show a certain result concerning how the unit binomial changes, okay, and I'm going to show you how we get that result using out of all techniques or out of all the techniques that is used in calculus limits and continuation they are more like limits only okay so here we here we have let's just say a part of, of the curve okay i'll draw it a bit big over here a part of the curve like that okay and then we got a certain point okay let's just say a certain point over here where we will go to the binomial by you the unit binomial where we define the, where the parameter we use is x okay and what is S? S is the arc length. So why we use it? Because it's unit, okay? Go, go to my previous lessons. We need to put S inside so that it's unit. So one vector over here, which is the unit binomial at the arc length S, and we'll draw another one over here, okay? Let's just say, which is the unit binomial at S plus a small change in S like this over here, okay? So now we will now draw some information from this using this graph in a way to really interpret the information that we're going to draw from this equation. So this is, this is the equation that we have over here and the first thing that we are going to do is we're going to take the magnitude of both sides, okay? So the magnitude is goes like that for ds, okay? Now I can leave the, the minus sign out because the magnitude of minus one is one, okay? And I will put the magnitude of torsion, okay? Followed by the magnitude of the unit normal vector, okay? Over here like this. Oh, I forgot the, the Bs, the arrows, okay? But it's not vital at the moment. Okay, so we got this thing over here like this. Now, like always, what do we know about the unit normal vector? Well, it's unit, so the magnitude is one. Okay, so rearranging, right? It both sides, I got something like this. Okay, taking the magnitude. Okay, now, so what is next? Okay, now this is the, the how to say, the integral form or the derivative form, okay, where it's continuous. So, since we want to make an interpretation, we need to kind of really take the limit or 
how to say, rewrite this in its limit form so that we can suspect what, what's going on over here where we have written it in limit form, B plus S. Then we take the limits and we see what we get. So taking the limit, okay, this is equals to limit change in S equals to zero, the magnitude of change in B, okay, and over the change in S over here like this. Okay, that is fair enough. Okay, so at this point, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to introduce another quantity relating to the diagram we have over there. And the quantity is theta. And what is theta? Theta is really the angle that is the angle between these two vectors over here. Okay, the, by, the unit binomial at S and the unit binomial at S plus a small change in S, given that a change in S is small. Okay, so what is next? Well, we got a change in B over here. We need to somehow write a change in B over here. But that is not a problem because a change in B, the binomial vector, okay, is simply this vector minus this vector over here, which is the, the final binomial, unit binomial, okay, take away the initial one, which is the one over here. And when we draw it, we represent it as this over here like that. Okay, so this is the change in B. Okay, BS. Okay, that's, that's fine. Okay, that's satisfactory. Okay, so now, what do we know about limits? Okay, I'm not too sure whether is this a proper definition, but I kind of suspect that in, in calculus that you study, you are able to do this, okay? We can write the limit, change in S, okay? I mean, a limit as change in S tends towards zero of a change in B, okay? Where we will introduce another quantity, the same quantity that we put over here, so we will get a ge geometric representation or graphical representation, a change in theta, the same theta that we have over here, and then we times by a magnitude change in theta with a change in S, similar to the chain rule, but it limits form. Okay, because simply, you see, just look about it. If change in theta is, is a quantity, any quantity, okay, knowing that right now it is because of the limit sign over here, it could be a very small change in angle, this will just simply cancel out with this and we will get the one over here, okay? And then and another limit definition is that we can just take the limit of this multiplied by the limit of this. If I am not wrong, okay, please drop me a mail if I made a mistake about that because I really want to correct myself.